good. All right, hi. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, Colin Archibald, and uh, uh, today I'll be covering on how I do chainmail shirts. Um, I have been doing them for well o over 10 years, close to 13. I think I've made over 20 of them. So uh, I want to sort of mention uh, the method of uh, to my madness and how I go from uh, putting rings together to making a shirt. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is I will be, for this class, I'll be using 18 gauge 3 8 aluminum. Uh, uh, I have used brass and steel in the past, but for the purpose of this class, uh, this is an aluminum that I will be uh, working with. Uh, for, and of course, uh, the shirts are mostly going to be European foreign one. And um, yeah, and and to start, uh, there is a few uh, things that I've learned over the years, and about uh, shirts that go uh, that will go this way and then uh, and then go down. Uh, the rings sit in, in ways, so I'm just going to move the camera here and see if I can uh, show showcase uh, both both. Here. Uh, see, uh, when uh, making a shirt, you want the, from uh, hip to hip the, the rings to slide uh, to go this way, so that whenever you like inhale and exhale, it, it can you know, expand. So that's that's one little thing that uh, that is uh, actually more historically correct. Uh, here it is the same same amount of rings uh, here. Two, um, that will be that will uh, uh, unfortunately that uh, they don't fully have their see on my hand. and uh, that will here is a uh, second piece that shows here that they are going in a different direction and that will be going up the up the, to the shoulder. So back to me here. Uh, I am actually uh, wearing this. I will be using less props in this class, but for the, uh, the purposes of every shirt that I've ever uh, uh, ever made, I always uh, do a bit of a, uh, a waistband, and uh, I, I kind of do something uh, that resembles this here. Now I do a circle, and then I mark two places, uh, four spots. Now those will be pretty much armholes. Um, how you do uh, armpits uh, is actually quite varied. Um, I've learned a few methods in the, in the past, um, but th those will be the armholes. Now, this, the numbers are, are generally what I would say one size fits most, um, where uh, I, I see the numbers are upside down, but the numbers are 50, 50, 15, 15. And what I mean by that is from uh, where, where the rings are not, not uh, linked, to the other side here is uh, 50 rings, and then in the armhole, um, from where the, the the first ring, where the first ring is linked to the other side here, where it's linked, it is 15. Uh, so that uh, I, I guess I'm a bit uh, overly obsessed with uh, symmetry, but if you ever want to do like an inlay in the center, knowing how many rings you have in the center to work with uh, is is uh, it is a good way to go. So once you have something uh, as similar as this, uh, what I um, from making a, a loop here, where you're doing the the one and one and two all the way around to get to the other end. Now, when you get to the other end, it sort of like folds over, so you're going to have to add uh, one extra uh, 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 rings to make it even. So it, it will be like 29, for, for example, plus 1. So 29 being 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, of the 2s, and then adding the 1 here. So once you get uh, something that's uh, similar to uh, this here, uh, I mean, uh, yes, it is very loose. And the reason you want it very loose is so that when it, is, it will uh, tighten as you add rings up and rings down. And considering that I generally play uh, up in the Northern Empire, where it's usually pretty cold, it, I usually wear a lot of layers, and a lot of people wear the shirts do wear layers, or even if you're wearing a gamson, you want it to uh, at least be able to fit over for that. So that's why I always go with it, uh, that uh, 
oversized. So as long as it expands, uh, let's, let's say, a hand length out from your chest, pretty good chances it's going to fit you in the end. Now, uh, for uh, doing a neck hole, a neck hole is usually where I go next uh, by uh, make it by uh, doing the foreign one in into it uh, until you get to about ear level. Uh, I know I, I know I have uh, no hair, so that's never been a real concern to me. But you know, as long as you get to just about where your ears are, which in this case would probably be about uh, about uh, uh, five inches uh, from where these are, and once you get that in, then uh, you have yourself uh, uh, the head hole, nice and. Uh, nice and straight down. Now, if you feel uh, now if you feel it's too tight or too loose, you, know, you just you know cut it out or add more if you need be. Uh, uh, another thing I always like to do is uh, before when I first started doing chain shirts, I would always do uh, a V neck. However, that creates a tr stress point, like right at the one the one ring, which uh, which will then of course start to split because if you have a lot of weight on the sleeves. Then uh, each side will slowly uh, put a lot of stress on that one spot. So what I, I, I have I have done, I mean it's actually pretty simple. Is I just I, all I did was I created two stress points uh, uh, so that there's a, a line. Uh, uh, so there's like the uh, the neck, and then there's two stress points. So that way, uh, uh, it, that way, it's uh, it's basically splitting the weight in half. Um, when it comes to the back of the neck, uh, back of the neck, I tried to make sure that if it's that it doesn't go doesn't go too far back. So I would probably like, go all the way up to about I guess where my shirt sort of ends, maybe a, a few inches down from that. When you get uh, when you've done that, you'll have something that looks kind of like a head hole that looks kind of like. Um, like a weird box uh, like this, and if you can slide your head in and out, in and out, then then you're 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 golden on on that aspect. And that's pretty much the most technical part of uh, making a a sleeveless shirt, because once you have that, you pretty much have a, a, a tank top from where you build down and where uh, where you built up. And then you can make it lo uh, as, as long as you want. Uh, for the uh, uh, split in, in the crotch, gener uh, when I work with aluminum, and I guess it would be best if I face up. Uh, when I do uh, the, the the crotch uh, I, with aluminum, I always do like a double ring because uh, a lot of uh, combat. And I've seen I've seen some some uh, uh, fighters wearing uh, some of my shirts, and they just they they just. They're very, very active, and it can cause a lot of stress in that one spot. So I always do like a double ring in that one stress point uh, if you if I make it out of aluminum. Uh, but it has to be about not not the waistline, but but uh, like a little bit lower, or so it's like just just so when you like you know, when you when you uh, crouch down, it's a little bit low, like right about here, so that when you uh, when you doing uh, when you're squatting or getting ready to fight, it's not going to uh, hamper your movement or, or you know, basically rip apart. And then you decide if you wanted to, if you wanted to go all the way down to your knee, or just at your waistline. Uh, if it goes down to your knee, I guess you would have to worry about the stress line, uh, the the stress point. Um, I know this has seemed pretty quick, but that's pretty much a, a rundown of. Of, of that oh sleeves uh, I forgot about that when I uh, for sleeves uh, I would always uh, start from the, the arm and sometimes I if I have never done the, if I haven't done it for the person or if I'm doing a short sleeve I would probably run uh, boring one all the way down to let's say oh well, I guess where uh, the my shirt would end here and then once I've done that I start building uh, form one all around. It's a whole lot of uh, just adding to rings like that, but that's pretty much that. I have, uh, maybe I'll do another class on contractions, but uh, essentially that's where I go from from there. Um, 
Well, if there's any uh, questions, I will gladly take them. <laughs> if it comes to making shirts, if anyone has any. Hold on. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, can you just go over real quick what you mean by contractions? Okay. Uh, in in um, uh, when, when you're doing a four a four in one piece, you're always doing it evenly, where it's uh, where you, where, you, where, you, where the one row has four, and the next row has four. Well, let's actually I'll, I'll actually do an example of that right now. Just get some rings, my players, and I will demonstrate. <laughs> So what we're going to be doing here is um, it's going to be rough, so I'm not going to be uh, essentially going to cl close them neatly. So all right, let's see if I have this showing right. I'm sorry for the quality of the camera. I do apologize. Uh, so instead of doing uh, just a four one, which would be just adding the rings within uh, two of them like this, I would instead grab the third one here like that. Close that off, and let's just uh, close off that row here by doing a simple four and one here. All right, and what you have uh, it's a little tighter because it's a little tight, but what you have here is you've gone from So what you ha have is you've gone from four. Boy, I moved that my camera. Going from four down to three, and that way that row here is now uh, tighter than it was here, which I have do I have done for under under your arms because sometimes you get a lot of uh, lot uh, you get you get a lot of. Uh, Excess just hanging out, and sometimes you want to make it uh, tighter as it gets closer to the wrist. Okay. So you would use uh, that method to uh, sh uh, to uh, make the row smaller, uh, as so uh, all the way down to the wrist. But try not to uh, probably do it in spurts, like in a few spots. Just doing it continuously will make it way too tight, and obviously you still need to get your hand in there. So that and that is uh, contraction. Great. Uh, my other question is, for uh, a four-in-one, you know, shirt, how do you go about estimating how many rings that you're going to need? Um, well, uh, it's trial and error um, uh, was, uh, was how I started. And I figured for a medium-sized person, uh, you're looking at roughly 7,000. If you're doing 14-gauge 3 uh that size I'm very familiar with, and it would be about 7,000 rings to, to get the um, right amount. Uh, however, if, if, if you're all about measure, uh, measurements, the website, uh, the ringlord.com, they when, when selling rings, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes they actually show in a line uh, if you're buying a certain size how many rings are in a square foot. So if uh, you ever need to measure yourself and see how many square feet you need, uh, if you do a four and one sheet, it would actually tell you how many rings you need for that square footage. That sounds handy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because, uh, yeah, Chain Shirts was, a, I guess, is how that site really started and then went into jewelry and other things. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone else have questions? That's it for me. You ready? <laughs> well, um, that's, again, that's uh, how I, I had a little bit of into my badness and how I uh, done all the, all the shirts. Over the years, um, perhaps my next class will be about end But uh, basic, uh, basic uh, shirts is pretty much that. Uh, wh one other thing is, you know, doing the trim. Once you're done with your your uh, shirt, uh, trim it with a different color, uh, black, uh, gold, or whatever uh, color is uh, uh, is your fancy uh, to to that and to uh, make it a little bit more uh, make it pop. So, um, yeah, thanks for uh, uh, sitting in for uh, this little uh, class.